new Gorilla 450 is a roadster based on the Royal Enfield Himalayan's Sherpa 450 platform. But it's more compact, more accessible, significantly lighter and apparently more fun for everyday riding. With reasonable pricing as well, Gorilla 450 certainly makes for a lighter, more accessible motorcycle. Is it just a smaller Himalayan or is there more to it? We spent a day riding the new Gorilla 450 around the Spanish countryside to get a sense of what this new roadster offers. Hello and welcome to Car and Bike. We are in sunny Spain and we have the newest motorcycle from Royal Enfield. Of course, you've heard a lot about it. This is the Gorilla 450. Yes, based on the Himalayan 450 platform, the same shape of 450 engine but there are quite a few changes, slight chassis changes. Of course, you can see it's a more compact version. It's a roadster after all. Smaller 17-inch front wheel. It's lighter by 11 kgs. And there are other changes on the throttle map and so on and so forth. But we'll talk about all that, how is it to ride. But before that, let's take a closer look at what all has changed. The Gorilla 450 strikes a handsome pose. Although based on the new Malian, its stance is distinctly different. That's because there are some significant changes to give it a different personality. With a smaller 17-inch front wheel, a significantly lower 780mm seat height and a shorter wheelbase as well. The face has an exposed look, although the headlight is the same unit shared with several other Royal Enfield models. The fuel tank is smaller as well. Overall, Gorilla is not just more compact, also a full 11 kg lighter than the Himalayan. So as you can see, the Gorilla is a more compact bike than the Himalayan. That's primarily because of the chassis changes, which includes this 17 inch front wheel, much smaller than the 21 inch wheel of the Himalayan. Of course, the rake has sharpened a bit. And overall, you can see the bike is more compact, lower seat height, more accessible. Now to me, it looks like a roadster. That's what Royal Enfield terms this as a roadster. But look at the block pattern tires, look at the stance of the bike. It looks slightly scramblerish, doesn't it? Looks are subjective, of course, but to me, it's a good looking bike, quite desirable. And according to Royal Enfield, this bike is intended to get in a whole lot of new customers into the Royal Enfield brand. Now imagine somebody walking into a Royal Enfield showroom with the intent of buying a Himalayan or one of the 350s. The Himalayan may be too big, may be too intimidating, but this one, lighter, more compact, more accessible, lower seat height. So that makes it possibly slightly more desirable than a Himalayan, which could be a little big and more intimidating for some people. Now, of course, a customer who's walking into a showroom with the intent of looking for a 350 or something from the Royal Enfield family will see this more performance, liquid-cooled engine, and the newest model in the Royal Enfield family. That is the intent of the new Guerrilla 450. And to me, it's a good looking bike, but how is it to ride? How does it behave on the road? That's what we intend to find out today. So let's get on with it. First, let's look at the changes to the chassis, which is similar to the Himalayans, but has a different steering geometry and slightly different subframe as well. On the suspension front, there is no upside down fork, but it's a telescopic fork developed with Showa and suspension travel has been reduced to go with the bike's street oriented personality. Rear suspension travel is also limited at 150 mm. On the features list, you have the same two ride modes and the same TFT displays the Himalayans, at least on the top spec variant. And uh, when you sit on this bike, it's a more compact bike, your seat height has gone down. so. Even if you're slightly challenged by height, this one, my reference, my height is five feet, nine inches. I can flat feet both sides pretty comfortably. So even if you're five, six, five, seven, this is an accessible motorcycle, which you won't feel very daunting. And the seat is also narrow in the front. So nice upright riding position, a roadster. So same Sherpa engine, but there are changes in the fueling. The 452cc single-cylinder liquid-cooled engine has been retained from the Himalayan with identical output and same internals. But Roland Field says the throttle modulation has been changed to give the Gorilla 450 a somewhat more enthusiastic response. You also get slightly different gearing, you see a slightly smaller 45T rear sprocket. 
but the fat rear tire compensates for any change in actual on-road performance. Engine performance is eager and enthusiastic, but to get to the meat of the talk, you will need to be in the right gear and you will have to plan this when you're riding enthusiastically on a twisty road. So long as you're on the gas, with the engine spinning above 3000 RPM, the Gorilla 450 doesn't disappoint. Now the Royal Enfield engineers tell us that the fueling has been changed somewhat to make this a little more energetic, a little more responsive and that's apparent when you ride it. And also apparent is the less weight. It's a full 11 kgs lighter so it feels more urgent than the Himalayan. But what still remains? is that you have a wide band of torque, yes, from 3000 RPM to 8000 RPM where you get 85% of the 40 Newton meters of torque, but below 3000 RPM, you still need to downshift to get into the power band. So that characteristic, which we had mentioned in the Himalayan first ride, still remains in this bike. But overall, if you're looking for a roadster at that price bracket, at that segment in a 400, 450cc motorcycle class, this one, can be a great fun little motorcycle to throw around twisties and to have an engaging and enjoyable ride experience. On a twisty mountain road, the Gorilla 450 feels composed and stable, qualities which definitely make it fun to ride. The front end offers good feedback and if it's confidence you're looking for, the Gorilla 450 will offer that to you. Ride quality though is on the firmer side, complement the bike's sharp handling. So this is a Roadster, let's talk about how it handles, how it rides. For starters, it's got a smaller wheel so you can really throw it around. It's a very engaging motorcycle ride, especially on twisty roads that we've been riding. Of course, the Himalayan with the bigger 21 inch front wheel is also a great handler. But this one takes the handling a step further. So great fun motorcycle to throw it around corners. You're always in control. So. Perfect balance of the chassis and the suspension. Of course, suspension travel has gone down 140 mm front, 150 mm at the rear. The roads we are riding on don't have potholes like we do back home in India, but whatever little bumps that we have covered, more or less the suspension is in plant and it's a little on the firmer side, but not exactly bone jarring. So I think this should do pretty well back home in India also, but remember, it is on the firmer side that we'll let you know about the ride quality once we get to test the bike back home in India. The Gorilla 450 certainly has no dearth of rivals and with its accessible and fun personality, Royal Enfield will be hoping to replicate the success that it has had with the Hunter 350. Pricing is reasonable, starting at 2,39,000 rupees for the base variant, going up to 2,54,000 rupees for the top spec variant. Do let us know in the comments your thoughts on the prices. In all, the new Gorilla 450 is a fun street bike which can put a smile on your face every single time you open the throttle. So, who is the Royal Enfield Gorilla for? Well, Royal Enfield says it's a roadster, so it will go up against similar roadsters in this segment like the Speed 400, the Harley Davidson X440 and of course the Hero Maverick 440 as well. But to me, it looks somewhat like a scrambler, doesn't it, with the block pattern tires. Is it a scrambler? pretending to be a roadster or will there be a scrambler on the same platform going forward? Of course, you have a plethora of aftermarket accessories like a sump guard, fly screen and whatnot to kit it out to make it more off-road capable. Of course, suspension travel isn't that much, but 150-140 mm travel is good enough for soft-roading. But if you are looking primarily at a roadster, again, it has to go up against the likes of the Triumph Speed 400. And to that end, this bike is definitely an enjoyable motorcycle, of course, but those small, small things remain. It below 3000 RPM, the punch of the engine just isn't there. And like the Himalayan, the Sherpa 450 still feels vibey, particularly at cruising speeds between 100, 110 kilometers per hour, which is where most of you will be using if you're going for long distance riding. But if you want a great handling motorcycle, this one definitely is an enjoyable motorcycle. And according to Royal Enfield, this will spawn a new genre of customers into the Royal Enfield brand. And I think to that end, the Gorilla has hit it right on the head of the nail.